Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military of a Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. First let's talk about Sumu direction. Russia's attack on the Sumu region can begin at any moment, send the representative of the state border service of Ukraine. The Russian army can at any time take actions similar to those taking place in the Kharkiv direction. This is being done in order to stretch the front line and and the forces of the Ukraine Armed Forces, Dimension Kasset. Furthermore, the Russian sources from the other hand says that the currently the Ukrainians are trying to concentrate their forces in the vicinity of the village by the name of Kazachi Lahir. I remind you that uh, the clashes for Elipse have been taking place uh, probably for the previous 11 days and we see that neither the Russians nor the Ukrainians publish any additional updates about further progress either of the Russians or Ukrainians. But from the other side we see that the Ukrainians continue concentration of the forces which confirms that most likely the parties are getting prepared before further offensive. As soon as the Russians are able to break through the Ukraine defense on Lipsy, most likely the Russians will introduce additional forces in, and they will start moving to Kazachia, Lopin and Zolochev. So the situation, as we can see, is very complicated. Now let's move to Vovchansk. As you can see, during the previous night, we haven't received almost anything from the direction, just few, let's say, artillery strikes, few FPV drone strikes from the Ukraine positions, somewhere in the southern part of Vovchansk. So nothing special, just a regular military routine. Uh, for now, we haven't received any confirmations whether the Russians managed to cross uh, the Vovcha river to the south or not, or whether the Russians managed to improve further to the east or not. Now we are moving further into the south. We have lots of very interesting updates uh, from Avdiivka directions. Uh, for example, the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces in uh, in uh, uh, Sevier's direction. The Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces between the trenches, fortifications. So we can say that uh, the uh, let's say main offensive operation in Sevier's direction, direction has begun, and the Russians are pushing. Today we got a very interesting video from Sevier's. On this video, according to the Russians, they managed to discover the concentration of Ukrainian forces a temporary point position and as a result of ODAP 1500 strike the entire building was almost reduced to ruins. Ukrainians most likely suffered significant losses yet we haven't received any confirmations of the losses but anyway most likely they were very heavy. Now let's move to Chesavyara. The Russians continue offensive operation and today the pro-Ukrainian mappers confirmed additional progress of the Russian forces in the uh, northeastern part of the eastern Chesavyara. So according to pro-Ukrainian mappers just this part was captured by the Russians during the previous 24 hours. Now let's move to Klishevka. As you can see, we have adjusted the map because uh, during the previous night we got significant number of confirmations, mainly from different reliable sources and uh, the few of them was like were like the main uh, hate or, or in Klishevka uh, like the village itself came under the full control of Russian army. Furthermore we got report from different mappers have some adjustments some corrections as you can see and according to information we have the Ukrainians have left uh, abandoned their positions completely in the fields between Sevierski, Donetsk, Donbass, Kanal, Andreevka, Klishevka and Ivanovska and according to some sources the Ukrainians let's say cross Kanal and currently there are no more Ukrainians in this part. For now, we of course are not going to change the map. It's too big progress, it's too big territories that were abandoned, so we need additional reports or some video confirmations. But anyway, most likely this is going to take place, this is going to happen, maybe not just in one day, maybe in a week. It will be stretched in a week, but anyway, the Ukrainians are no longer available to hold the territory, and most likely they will fall back on this side of Siversky Donetsk and Bas Canal. Obviously, significant progress for the Russians, and now they are able to start full scale offensive such as Aviar, also not just from the eastern but from the southeastern and the southern directions. Now let's move further to Avdeevka area. We have additional very important updates and today we got the first geolocated confirmation of Russian attempts to attack the village by the name of uh, Nova Alexandrovka. We have Ukra Ukrainians, so the Ukrainian sources published the video of Russian attack using significant number of armored vehicles. For example here we can see the Russian tank uh, that's reached the outskirts uh, of uh, the village. Then we see another tank that was moving behind him. Uh, the Ukrainians were trying to attack the Russians with anti-tank missiles. On this part of the video we see the Russians successfully landed in the area. The Ukrainians were FPV droning the Russians, the Ukrainians were attacking the Russian tanks and vehicles with missiles, but we see that uh, the armor of Russian tank is very heavy and very tough and the Ukrainians haven't managed to break it. So the infantry landed and the official ground operation in Novo Alexandrovka has begun as well. Currently uh, we will wait a little 
will beat another day to change the color of map, but most likely the day we're gonna receive additional updates and the colors will be changed. The Russians also improved their positions further in the direction of Sokol, according to pro-Ukrainian state the mapper Deep State. Very interesting details are coming from Novoselovka Pirsha. The situation in this artillery pocket are suffering significant problems with logistics and support. I reminded that there are a significant number of rivers, water reservoirs and lakes around between the villages Novoselovka Pirsha, Novopakrovska, Sokol, Voschod. And I reminded that during the previous weeks the Russians destroyed every single bridge in this area and the, the, during the previous days the Ukrainians made a lot of attempts to restore at least one bridge to restore the road to restore supply and support but the Russians controlled the situation and when the Ukrainians brought additional engineering equipment the Ukrainian machine was destroyed as a result of Lancet strike so the Russians are not going to give the Ukrainians any chances to start let's say uh, supporting this territory um, until this territory falls now let's move to Nitailova we have additional progress according to pro-Ukrainian the mappers the Russians managed to improve and to capture the farms so basically now Nitailova is 100% or at least 95% under Russian control but the Russians continue clearing operation most likely they will spend another day and maybe tomorrow or maybe today the Minister of Defense will give us additional updates now we are moving to Krasnogorovka do we have some doubts where exactly we can see right now the line of combat contact today the Russian sources published the video of artillery strikes on Ukrainian positions and most likely on this video we can see at uh, the edge Ukrainian positions in the town so this is the uh, school uh, the temporary points of armed forces of Ukraine and most likely this is uh, the edge uh, position of the armed forces of Ukraine on this direction so most likely everything to the east uh, everything that color has no color on the map is already under Russian control now we are moving to Novomikhailovka. We have also additional progress of the armed forces of Russian Federation. We continue receiving videos of how the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking the Russian forces in the eastern, southeastern part of Paraskovyevka. Yet the Russians, according to geolocations, haven't managed to move further to the northwest. So for now, we are keeping the area as is. Also, we have a different mappers update. According to uh, Syriac, the Russians managed to improve their positions and to answer this tree line. The tree line that uh, further moves, uh, that goes, that lays further to th that is heading towards uh, Konstantinovka itself and most likely the Russians will try to use this uh, tree line for further offensive at least to sending additional forces and reinforcements to the west uh, with the purpose to get Parasko uh, no, Konstantinovka itself uh, when talking about Konstantinovka the Ukrainians are no longer control the fields and tree lines let's say right after Konstantinovka on this video we can see how the Ukrainian vehicles let's say answered the most uh, let's say eastern part of the village and Right after that, the Russians start bombing and attacking them with missiles, with FPV drones, with Lancet, with everything. So basically, uh, that means that everything right after Konstantinovka is already on the gray zone. The Ukrainians control just the territory probably inside of the village and everything to the west, nothing more to the east. So the battle continues and most likely we are going to see more and more updates about the situation. Now we are moving to Staromayorsko, Rajaina. We have uh, geolocations, first geolocations confirming the Russian presence inside of uh, Staromayorsko. During the previous days, we remember sources reported that the Russians entered, but we were keeping the territory as a gray zone. And now the Ukrainian sources published significant number of videos with FPV drone strikes. And these are, though, on, as you can see, the Ukrainians were trying to stop another Russian wave of attack. And there was an episode when the Ukrainians were attacking the Russians right inside of Staromayorsko itself. This is it. So this this is episode was geolocated. On this video, we can see the Russian personnel carrier right in Central Park, and the Ukrainians were trying to attack it. So, which we have 100% sure confirmation about additional Russian progress in Staromayorska and as you can see in Rajaina as well. Uh, very interesting updates are coming from, uh, they say, Odessa and Nikolaev area, more precisely from the entire Ukraine. People are saying that uh, there are no more people on the streets. Nikolaev, uh, let's say, mayor says, surprised by the lack of people on the streets after the mobilization law was adopted in Nikolaev region there are fewer people on the streets and men are afraid of officially find a job after the law on mobilization came into force he said furthermore we have additional updates from Odessa the same story people were moving uh, through Odessa from one to another and there were no people just women and, uh, and kids no men or uh, people men are sitting at home uh, afraid of going to street because they understand as soon as they appear on the street they would be captured by the Ukrainians and would be sent 
extent to the line of combat contact. During the previous night, we got lots of videos that we haven't added on map about the shocking, let's say, uh, words of soldiers who find themselves on the line of combat contact, saying that uh, some people were mobilized just three, four days ago, and today, after four days of mobilization, they were found, uh, lost their lives somewhere between trenches on the line of combat contact. The situation is terrible, as you can see. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye-bye.